Hello, my name is Dr. Ozzy Stewart. I'm an academic, a disability consultant and trainer, and also I like Star Trek, World of Warcraft, and I do other stuff too. But today I'm here to talk to you about Black Lives Matter and why it's relevant to disability and COVID-19 today. And how we can think about these things in much the same light. So I'll be doing talking about three areas really. The disproportionate infection rates and deaths within black and minority communities and disabled people too, to show that how similar they were and they are related. I'll also talk about how this is explained by the structural inequalities that are endemic in our society. And finally, I'll talk about how this relates to Black Lives Matter and how this shows what needs to change if we want to make things better for everyone. Now, you might think, what has Black Lives Matter to do with disability? However, if I were to tell you that the death of George Floyd, shot by a police officer in Minnesota in the summer of 2020, was directly related to a disabled woman in Clapham in the early 70s who was very ill with the virus COVID-19, you would be correct to wonder how. Three set statistics will show why these two apparently separate events are directly linked to each other. The first one is about statistics and death rates among black and minority community, black and minority community in the United Kingdom. The report by Public Health England, August 2020, named disparities in the risk and outcomes from COVID-19, stated clearly that people from black ethnic groups were more likely to be diagnosed and also death rates were, were highest amongst people from these communities too. So not only were they diagnosed as being more likely to be diagnosed with COVID-19, they're likely to die, more likely to die. After accounting for age, sex, deprivation, region, uh, people of Bangladeshi ethnic origin had twice the risk of death than people from white, black, white British ethnicities. People from Chinese, Indian, Pakistani, other Asian, black, Caribbean and other black ethnicities were between 10 and 50% more likely to be to die from COVID-19 than compared to white British. This is the opposite of what we've seen in previous years, when the mortality rates were lower among Asian and black ethnic groups than white groups. So what we're seeing here is an increase in uh, health inequalities, which actually was declining before. So COVID-19 was definitely the factor. If we look at the data for disabled people, sadly, it's similar. Disabled people, as defined by the Equality Act and by the people that identify themselves, made up almost 6 out of 10, that's 59% of all deaths involving COVID-19 during this period. Obviously, you, you would work out straight away. This would include a lot of people from minority communities. Disabled people were made up around 16% of the study population followed from Kurt centres. So what this really means is that of that 16% of people, they made up almost over half, almost 60% of all deaths from COVID-19. That's a phenomenal number. After adjusting for region, population density, socioeconomic and demographics, poverty, etc., housing characteristics, the relative difference in mortality rates between disabled people with limiting, a, a high light, limiting a life experience and those non-disabled people were 2.4 times higher for female and two times higher for men, for males. In other words, if you had a life-limiting disability, you were twice as likely to die from COVID-19 than anyone else in our society. The reasons for health inequalities um, amongst minority communities um, were based are structural. They're obviously to do with age. Obviously, the older you get, whether you're male or female, 
the more likely you're likely to die from COVID-19. However, in comparison for the majority population, this was more significant for those communities. Same with gender. Men were more likely to die than women, especially those who were over 80 years old were 70 times more likely to die from anyone else. So, simply again, if you're from a blighted community, you are more likely to die if you're an older person. Geography as well. Local authorities with highest diagnosed diagnoses and death rates were among mostly urban. Death rates in London, for example, were three times higher than the lowest reach, lowest density region, which is southwest. One of the main drivers for death was deprivation. Diagnosis and death from COVID-19 in those living in high deprived areas, mostly deprived areas, was more than double the least deprived areas for both males and females. So if you're from a black minority community living in a deprived area, you were at significant risk compared to anyone else. Occupations, such as nursing, security guards, taxi drivers, chauffeurs, chauffeurs, sorry, bus and coach drivers, chefs, sales representatives, retail assistants, low-skilled workers on construction and processing, those working in social care as well, had a significantly high death rates of COVID-19 than any other group. I don't need to say that in these forms of employment, black and minority people, minority community, people from black minority communities predominated, especially in places like London, Bristol, Bradford, uh, Leeds, Liverpool, etc. Finally, comorbidities, co comorbidities, that is um, the variety of illnesses you can have from diabetes, poor um, heart conditions, uh, etc., high blood pressure, etc., etc., was also mentioned uh, on a on significant number of the death certificates of those who died. For example, of the COVID-19 deaths, diabetes was mentioned on 43% of certificates from Asian groups and 45% of black groups. This compares with the mention of only 21% on civics in general. So we know that if you're of a black community, live in a poor area, you, you've got a low paid job and you have a comorbidity, you are at significant risk when compared to anybody else. So what about disability? The same patterns emerge. A sizable part of the difference in COVID-19 mortality rates between disabled people and non-disabled people, as reported by the Office of National Statistics, states can only be explained by different circumstances in which members of those groups are known to live, such as domain, domains of socioeconomic disadvantage, etc. So what really this means is if you are poor and a disabled person living in high density area, you are at significant risk as well. Sounds familiar? Exactly. It is very similar to the black and minority communities too. However, these factors do not explain the entirety of the differences, suggesting that other unmeasured characteristics associated with disability are involved that require further explanation, investigation. So what this really means is that we can't say that it's only poverty and high density, etc., etc., that can explain this, but it has a significant factor. What we can say, though, is structure of our society drives these inequalities. Poverty, poor housing, overcrowding, unhealthy lifestyles partly explain the disproportionate number of excess deaths amongst disabled people and people from minority communities in Britain. In other words, this can be explained by the structural inequalities within our society. These are inbuilt inequalities in our society. If you are poor, live in an area with high deprivation, you're more likely to die, uh, die or be infected and die of COVID-19. If you're disabled or from a minority community, the risk was significantly higher. People from minority communities, disabled people, are more likely to be found in these reasons and are more likely to be poor. Okay, but what about Black Lives Matter? Black Lives Matter? I get it, I understand what you said so far, but what has it got to do with George Floyd and Black Lives Matter? 
let's before I talk about that, let me talk about stop and search because there's a direct link to a wider issue around our society where we can look at structures. Between t April 2018 and March 2019, for every four stop and searches per thousand white people, there was 38 for, for people from black communities. My brother, who is a banker, very affluent, nice car, big house, living in a very wealthy part of Oxford, he is still regularly stopped by the police to inquire where, about his whereabouts, movements, etc. He's in his car. And he's not young. London has the, has the, has the highest uh, stop and search rates amongst all ethnic groups, apart from Black, uh, so Dorset and Merseyside. Merseyside, when I say Merseyside, I don't mean the fact that Merseyside had more stop and search amongst white people, it just had higher than, the, higher than London. Than black people, sorry, just higher than London. If you understand what I mean. Why does this matter? Well, events 4,000 miles away in the United States this summer changed the way we think about these statistics. We've always known about these inequalities and, and experiences people had, but the way we think about it has changed, thanks to Black Lives Matter. George Floyd's death in 2020 during an arrest uh, by police officers was not the first. Since 2013 in the United States, on average, there's 1,100 people have been killed by police each year. Black people make up 28% of, of that number. But you must need to remember that they make up only 13% of the population. So technically, they're double, they have twice as likely to be killed by police officers than anybody else in the United States. That resonates. Does that ring a bell with our stop and search issue? The perception is, supported by data, that black people's experience, uh, experience black people experience, both in the United States and Britain, disproportionate levels of violence and discrimination simply because of who they are. Disabled people, disabled people also are likely to experience crime, poor health, poor outcomes, simply because of who they are. In other words, both groups matter less than the rest of the population in, in, the, in the way in which our society works, the way our society operates. They are treated less favourably and less equally, or in a, in inequalities impact on them more significantly. That social, economic, political power serves to maintain this status quo, which means that these people from these communities are always automatically disadvantaged in every aspect of, of, of life and what they do, how they move around our society. While the majority population, both in the United Kingdom and the United States, mainly white, I'll add as well, enjoy a relatively privileged position by comparison. What this basically means is they don't experience the things that disabled people and black people tend to do. Black Lives Matter has changed the way we think about this. It is no longer acceptable to blame these communities, blame black people, blame disabled people, feel sorry for them, for the discrimination and poor outcomes they experience. Instead, what Black Lives Matter has taught us, this is not inevitable. Things can change. That the responsibility for, it, for this is explained by the structures that maintain this inequality. Those structures can be changed. We need to be asking questions about why this is happening. Why is it that things are not being done, intervened, the engines are not put in place to protect people from discrimination? Unfortunately, these are decisions that, that can, cannot be made by those experienced this inequality. We are the weakest people. We are the ones who experience it. Unfortunately, the ones who do, do not experience it are the ones who actually have all the power. And they're less likely to recognise this is important to them. Until there's a common acceptance that this is no longer acceptable in a modern and wealthy society such as Britain, these inequalities will persist. Thank you, Ashindee.